Welcome back. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. I'm your host, Shannon Register. And this week, we are talking about the proposed high-speed rail that will go from Dallas to uh, Houston or from Houston to Dallas. We talked last segment with Holly Reed uh, about the high-speed rail and where they are on con- on getting ready to construct this, uh, where they are in the process of planning this whole big, huge project that goes through nine counties. And um, this segment, we're talking with Judge Ben Lamont, and he's uh, from Grimes County. And there are uh, about seven counties that have some opposition to the high-speed rail coming through uh, Texas. And so he's kind of leading that effort with the Texans Against High-Speed Rail. And you can learn more about them at TexansAgainstHSR.com. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. So let's talk a little bit about this high-speed rail. Um, they have, they're have they really not starting yet. They're in, still in the proposing stage, but yet they're very actively and aggressively approaching landowners and um, really out there working hard to, to get eminent domain, right? Well, they actually claim they have eminent domain, and, and on that basis, on that claim, they are actually moving forward, like you're saying, suing landowners, uh, sending threatening letters all up and down the corridor saying, if you don't let us on your property, we will sue you. And so they are, are being very aggressive about it. And, and there's a lot of disturbing details about ha- how the eminent domain process normally works versus what this entity is doing. So the the main opposition to what the Texas Central Rail are, is doing, the, what are the two main oppositions that you guys have? Well, the two main ones, the first one is the taxpayer subsidy. And inevitably, this project will fail financially. They are using very much, very highly inflated numbers that uh, certainly cannot be backed up. They won't disclose any of the financial details on how they arrived at those numbers, but when you use objective numbers from like Texas Department of Transportation, uh, reliable sources like that, their numbers are very much in conflict, overinflated about three times in in many instances. So uh, the the lack of financial feasibility ultimately leads to the taxpayer subsidy. Okay, so the first one is is – Financial feasibility. Will it will it be successful? Will it fail? And then the other one is eminent domain. Those are the two big issues that you guys have with the high speed rail. Is that right? That's right. Eminent domain and, okay. and private property rights there. Yeah. Okay. So with the financials, they're a uh, privately held company. They don't have to disclose their financials, right? That is well. Normally, actually, uh, if normally, well, like they tried to get the Surface Transportation Board, which is a federal agency, to claim jurisdiction, they filed two petitions in requesting that they that the STB do that, and those ultimately those p- petitions were denied. But at the Surface Transportation Board, they would have been required to prove financial feasibility if, okay. if the project were to move forward. As you can imagine, you, you, the idea normally is you don't yank people out of their homes and condemn their property without having the money and, and financial mm-hmm. uh, 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 ability to make this project happen. And they're claiming they do have the financial ability, right? They, they, a, they do claim they do. However, under And it's investors that have come together and put this money into their company, right? Well, it's a combination. They have raised uh, 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 less than 1% of the total project cost through investment. Uh-huh. investors. So it's it's less than 1% that they have raised. Uh, so they have a long way to go. They claim that they have the Japan Bank of International Cooperation that's willing to put up a significant amount of the, the debt to do that. But there has been no con- uh, confirmation that that has happened. Okay. So, so you guys, this um, Texans Against High Speed Rail, to kind of satisfy this, y'all would want to see their financials. And basically, they're just not wanting to show them to you. Well, we think it's most appropriately that since the Surface Transportation Board now has no jurisdiction, then you turn to the state. The state currently has no statute on the books to regulate high-speed rail. Now, what what Texas Central Partners believes is as a result of that, they can proceed for this project unregulated. And without anybody looking over their shoulder or anybody or any governmental entity validating this project, we strongly disagree with that. We believe that financial feasibility is the first step. Before you do anything else, you Mm -hmm. need to demonstrate financial feasibility. Because ultimately, if the project were to be built and it failed, they couldn't finish building it or they couldn't uh, run it once it was built or whatever gets in the way of it. It's a huge, massive project across Texas, and the state would have to step in, or or federal uh, would have to step in and take it over. Absolutely, and ultimately, the taxpayers pay pay for that. You're talking mm-hmm. about a 20 foot plus 
solid earth berm, solid p- piece of land, 20 feet tall, a mound, a mound of dirt going across from Dallas to Houston. In some instances, there will be, in less, less than half of it, will be elevated by, a, by a, some, some bridge-type structure, but a bulk of it would be a, a solid earth berm. And so if that fails, that's a huge problem because there are no at-grade crosses, crossings. There's no ability, if you have to expand a road or build a new road, how do you get across that? Mm-hmm. It, it's a huge, huge uh, burden for the taxpayers. Okay, let's talk about the eminent domain issues. Let's talk about you talk about that because you know all about that. You talk about <laughs> eminent domain and how this is because they're claiming they have eminent domain. So their claim is they have eminent domain under tra- Texas Transportation Code Chapter 112. And clearly, when you read the Transportation Code Chapter 112, there's two components that qualify a, a, an entity as a railroad and therefore having eminent domain. And the two qualifications are it's an either or circumstance. Either you are incorporated as a general railroad before 2007. They do not qualify under that segment section because they incorporated in 2012. Okay. The other uh, qualification is that you're ex- operating an existing railroad. So either two, oh, but you incorporated before 2007 or you're operating an existing railroad. They do not operate an existing railroad. We have them under oath trying to make the claim that they do, and they in basically deposition. said in deposition. Yeah, I'm sorry, in a deposition. And, and they claim that uh, that their railroad that they operate has not taken physical form yet, which is basically an imaginary railroad. It doesn't exist you know, It doesn't yet. exist yet. So it's pretty hard to imagine that they could, in a court of law, make a, make a claim successfully that they o- operate an existing railroad. Okay. So you feel like they don't have a case for eminent domain. And, and when they say that, you know, it's going to be beneficial for all people between Dallas and Houston, that it's a, you know, a great way to move people back and forth. What is kind of the, the opposition to that? You don't feel like it's going to really benefit all people? Well, you know, the reality is a, t- a round trip all in cost, a ticket plus traveling, mm-hmm. is going to be about $275. Okay. And, you know, that just does not make it feasible for mass transit. And so at the end of the day, this is a luxury trip for business class only. Okay. And that's not what in, uh, eminent domain is intended for. It's for, intended for general public benefit. Mm-hmm. General public, the mass, mass, massive amount of people that can benefit from this. And this doesn't qualify as that. So I think they're going to have a tough time getting laws passed at the state legislature if if they don't qualify, which they don't right now. And they and, and when when push comes to shove up there, trying to convince our state leaders, like our lieutenant governor and our governor, who are private property rights champions, obviously, mm-hmm. and and really really. Uh, are hone in on local government control. Yeah. We think they're going to have a tough time, you know, convincing so those right guys. So right now they're they're going to the courts, but they're going to move you feel like they'll move to the state legislature that that's what they're going to need to do next when we're in session next year. Well, they have sued over 30 people. Okay. Right now. And none none first of all, let me back up. They have sent threatening letters to every landowner in the corridor that they are either, if they, they don't, don't even know which, which path they're taking. They don't even yeah. know what path they're okay. taking. But they're still sending them. They're still okay. sending those letters saying, hey, let us on or we're going to sue you. Okay. And then they have actually sued 30 people. So over 30. But they have those cases haven't been decided yet. We don't no, know they, the No, they haven't yet. been decided yet. They have, in none of those cases, have they produced a document that shows exactly how they claim to have eminent domain, okay. which normally is done with pipelines and transmission lines and all those things. They say, hey, here's the Bill of Rights. Here's here's the document from the state of Texas that shows we have eminent domain and you have to let us on. They haven't been able to do any of that. Okay. So you feel like next session in the legislature, there might be a little... A it's it's going to be heated. I think this. <laughs> this is going to be the issue of the, the next issue. legislative session. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Well, this will be interesting. Well, you guys, uh, so you've got seven counties out there uh, working with you um, with Grimes County, and you guys are Texans Against High Speed Rail, and the website is TexansAgainstHSR.com. That's it. All right. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate hearing your side of it. Um, Obviously going to be a lot of debate. It'll be interesting to see how this turns out. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. We'll be right back here on Houston Real Estate Radio. And if you've got a a question, give us a call. 844-788-9444. You can call in your uh, real estate questions anytime. 844-788-9444. And if you missed any of today's show, uh, if you missed uh, Holly when she was talking about the high-speed rail, or any of uh, Judge Ben Lamont's uh, part about the Texas uh, 
Texans Against High Speed Rail. You can catch it online at HoustonRealEstateRadio.com.